Hey kids, happy Tuesday. I'm so glad to see you guys again. Um, this video is just gonna have a read aloud for the Studies Weekly this week, um, which is all about the population explosion here in Florida. So I'm gonna go ahead and share a screen so you can read along, get out your social studies, Studies Weekly, week 24, and um, let's start reading. I will tell you that I'm gonna give you a few hints to help you with this week's crossword puzzle while I'm reading, so you may want to listen up. Population explosion. Have you ever seen fireworks lighting up the night sky? There aren't many things quite as fun to look at as those. First, you might hear the whop of something heavy being launched into the air. Then you might see a light like a shooting star or comet whirling upward. And then comes the best part with a giant boom. You see the bright firework. First, it's just a tiny patch of bright light. But then in a split second, a million tiny lights spread out across the sky. Here we are, I'm sorry, we here at Studies Weekly think about fireworks whenever we think about all of the terrific people who have come to live in our great state. Why fireworks, you ask? Think about it. In 1845, only 70,000 people lived in Florida, a tiny portion of people against a whole bunch of land. But then in the 1920s, Florida's population exploded. Suddenly, there were people all over the place making our state come alive just like a firework lighting up the sky. It's no wonder they call those years Florida's population boom. These days, 70,000 people wouldn't seem like so many. In fact, that's about how many people visit Orlando's Magic Kingdom in one single busy weekend. Why did they decide to come here? Where did they come from? Those are all good questions and we have the answers. Turn the page and let's get cracking. All right, I'm gonna to flip to the inside and I will read the headings of the sections before I read them out loud. Rails, roads, and bridges. In the early 1900s, Florida leaders were looking for ways to get people to come visit our state. One way they did this was to give land to people like Henry Flagler and Henry Plant. Both men used their new land to build hundreds of miles of railroad. That's super important, kids. Go ahead and highlight it or underline it. You'll need that information later. They also built hotels and houses for visitors and workers to live in. By the 1920s, the government had built roads that made it possible for people to travel all over the state. One of these roads was the Connors Highway. It was built in 1924 and connected West Palm Beach and Okeechobee City. Florida's leaders realized that they needed to build some bridges over Florida's rivers and waterways. Two of Florida's oldest bridges are the Old Acosta Bridge and the Seven Mile Bridge. The Old Acosta Bridge was built in Jacksonville in 1921. It was the first to be built over the St. Johns River. Construction on the Seven Mile Bridge began around 1908. That's super important. Go ahead and underline or highlight that sentence. At the time, the bridge was one of the longest in the world. It connects the city of Marathon to the island of Little Duck Key. With all of these new trails, roads, and bridges in place, Florida became a state where it was easy for people to get around. People saw that Florida was a place with good transportation and cities that were growing fast. I'm gonna stop right there and give you a correction on the Crossword puzzle number four across. It should say construction of the blank bridge started in, not 1921, cross it out. It should say 1908. All right, let's keep reading. The numbers. Just how fast is Florida's population growing? Let's look at a few important numbers. In the 150 years between 1850 and 2000, our state's population has grown by at least 29% every decade. A decade is 10 years. Let's go ahead and highlight whenever they give us a definition that's usually super important. So highlight that definition of a decade. And some decades have even more, have even seen more population growth. For example, during the population boom of the 1920s, population rose about 51%. Wow, go ahead and highlight that sentence because you're gonna need it later. In the 1950s, our population here in Florida grew 51%. During the next big boom of the 1950s, population rocketed up an incredible 78%. 
And during the 1970s and 80s, Florida's population grew by a whopping 90%. That's a great deal of people. The truth is that while population all over the nation is constantly rising, Florida's population is always rising even faster. Making Florida hot, real estate. In 1919, a man from Miami Beach called Carl Fisher managed somehow to turn a mangrove swamp into a beautiful sandy seashore. Go ahead and highlight that. Um, Miami Beach and the man named Carl Fisher are super important, you'll need that later. He did it by dredging up sand from the bottom of Biscayne Bay. Fisher got to work creating advertisements to advertisements made to attract people to the paradise he had created. Stories of great bargains on Florida land spread from coast to coast. By 1925, Florida was one coast to coast real estate office. People came to Florida like ants to a picnic. The population boomed and people with land to sell got rich, rich, rich. It looked too good to be true, and it was. Less than a decade later, the country was rocked by the Great Depression. Remember last week's issue of Florida Studies Weekly? That was before spring break kids, but remember um, we talked about how the Great Depression um, affected everyone in the country, especially those people who here were here in Florida. Retirement paradise. Look around you in Florida and you will see plenty of kids your own age. You'll see plenty of people your parents' age too but you'll also see plenty of people who are much older, people who are old enough to be grandparents and great-grandparents. In fact, you may see more of them in Florida than just about anywhere else. The weather is so terrific <coughs> around here that our state is known all around the country as a terrific place to retire. It wasn't always that way. A hundred years ago, only 2% of Florida's population was older than the age of 65. Nowadays, it's more like 17%. Things cool off. Dr. John Gorey was an American physician who, was credit, who has been credited as the man who invented air conditioning. We can all thank him and highlight his name. That's super important. Many of us would not live here in Florida if we didn't have air conditioning. It would be too hot. His invention cooled off those who were sick by reducing the, their fevers and making it easier to breathe. Because of his inventions, many more people from the north came to Florida to live. After all, if you could have great weather in the winter and can keep cool in the summer, why live in the cold up north? Many say that Gorey's invention of the air conditioner was one of the most significant influences in Florida's increase in population. Florida's economic recovery after World War II. After World War II was over, great amounts of money came into Florida to rebuild manufacturing plants, agricultural farms, and tourism. Defense contracts helped to revitalize Tampa and the local cigar industry, which had been wiped out during the Great Depression after World War I and the stock market crash. The Tampa Bay area was suddenly booming. Scientists discovered an insecticide DDT in 1945, right after World War II. This almost instantly changed Florida's agricultural industry. It killed the pesky bugs that ate the vegetables and fruits. DDT was banned in the 1970s because it poisoned wildlife and posed a threat to humans and the environment. The cotton industry started making big time profits. Florida's citrus industry grew and Florida became the top state in the country in their production of orange juice. Florida's citrus growers patented the process of frozen concentrated orange juice. Cities such as Pensacola, Jacksonville, Miami, and Orlando were given money to rebuild and they started prospering. When the population grows, then the cities grow too. Next week's issue will discuss some of Florida's largest and most interesting cities. All right, take a look at this chart, kids. You can see Florida's population growth from 1850 all the way to 2000. Look at how many more people have come to Florida every um, decade. It's pretty crazy. All right, I'm gonna read one more section to you out loud about Florida's counties because one of the counties is our very own. <coughs> Lake, Levy, and Wakulla counties. We live here in Lake County. It's the pink one here on the map, right in central Florida. 
and I see Tavares on the map because it's the county seat. We are, um, Eustace and Mount Dora and Tavares are right near each other and Altoona is just north of Tavares. So let's read about our county and the two other counties that they um, write about in this week's Studies Weekly. Lake County. Here you could spend days boating on the hundreds of lakes. Be sure to stop at Mount Dora to visit the funky antique shops and waterside restaurants. There are treasures for everybody. Follow the lake shore to the county seat, Tavares, where the antique wooden boat show and nautical flea market takes place every spring. While you're there, catch a ride in an amphicar. It can drive right off the road and into the water. All right, so take a um, highlight Lake County, number one, because it's where we live. Number two, because you're gonna need it for the crossword. All right, let's keep reading about Levy County. This county is part of Florida's natural coast, nature coast, and Bronson is the county seat. In Levy, there are springs galore for casual swimmers, curious snorkelers, and even serious scuba divers. Agriculture is pretty important here, and you'd be nuts about this county's peanut crop. Eat them boiled, baked, or even fried. Get your picture taken with this year's baby peanut, and don't forget to buy a 20-pound bag for the ride home. Oh, and the peanut butter isn't bad either. Take a trip out to Cedar Key where you can visit a wildlife refuge. Take a boat ride and see prehistoric Indian artifacts all in one day. Wakulla County. Now, I think this um, county has a special place in my heart. It's where my sister lives. So let's read all about where she lives. This is way up north, the yellow one right in. This is called the Forgotten Coast of Florida. The county seat is Crawfordville, which was named after the town's doctor. Besides visiting St. Mark's Lighthouse in the mysterious deep water of Edward Ball Wakulla Springs State Park, you can hit a festival just about any time of the year here. Try the festivals that celebrate stone crabs, swine, otherwise known as pigs, mullet, monarch butterflies, and even worm grunting. Now what on earth is worm grunting? It's a way to get earthworms to come up out of the ground so you can use them as bait. All right, kids, that's your um, extra homework, your extra credit for social studies is to learn how to worm grunt. I'll do some research on my end as well. I hope that helped you guys with your Social Studies Weekly, and um, I will be completing um, this kind of read aloud every week with hints and tips for your, um, for your um, crossword puzzle. And I hope that helps. See you soon, guys.